Now, with polio being detected in sewage in many countries like the U.S. and the U.K. and Israel as well, Canada will begin testing its own wastewater for the virus. But with polio, monkeypox and other infectious diseases on the rise, how concerning are the dormant diseases with back to school just around the corner? To help me answer that now is infectious diseases specialist, Dr. Isaac Bogosh. Thank you so much for joining us this morning, Dr. Bogosh. My pleasure. Nice to chat, Tammy. Yeah, uh, we'll start off with um, this resurgence of some of these diseases that have been rare here, at least in North America, have been rare across uh, around the world, really, for some when it comes to polio. What is behind this resurgence? Does it have anything to do with the fact that we've been inside and, and sanitizing for the most part over the last two years? No, nothing like that at all. In fact, uh, this this issue with uh, polio, for example, predates the COVID-19 pandemic. And, you know, we've been very fortunate to live in a country where we have access to life-saving vaccines. And these are routine vaccines given to children. Uh, and, uh, and we just don't see polio here in Canada. Having said that, you know, for years before the pandemic, there is a, a large anti-vaccination movement. And as a result of you know, many factors, including that, we do have under-vaccinated communities and unvaccinated individuals. And these are communicable infections. They're transmissible. And if you see an issue on one side of the world, just like COVID-19 showed us, they can rapidly come to any other part of the world as well. So you've got polio circulating in the wastewater or circulating in populations in parts of New York and parts of UK and Israel other parts of the world as well. It may, may, we don't know, may be circulating here undetected. Uh, this is something where we don't have to contend with because we have free, effective, widely available vaccines. If people are vaccinated for polio, they really don't have anything to worry about. It's people who remain unvaccinated uh, who are susceptible to this. So, you know, Canada will test wastewater for this. And if they do see uh, pockets or communities that are uh, unvaccinated where there may be potential for polio circulating, you can be assured that there would be a, a large public health campaign to get everyone up to date and topped up with their vaccines. And if there is someone who's out there who uh, hasn't been vaccinated or is unaware of their vaccination status when it comes to polio, there are certain symptoms that they can look out for to potentially then send them to a doctor and figure out what is happening. Yeah, but I think the, the best thing to do is, you know, have periodic checkups with your uh, health care team, with uh, with your, your family doc or your pediatrician. I know sometimes people say, well, I don't have one. You know, you, you do have the gift of time, right? Like, it, it, yeah, I appreciate sometimes it's challenging to get a family doc or a pediatrician, but there's also um, public health clinics as well throughout uh, Ontario. Uh, and throughout, I mean, Ontario and throughout Canada. And these are, these are, these are healthcare providers who are really here to walk through the regular routine vaccines that kids and adults should have to prevent this. I mean, it, I know we're talking about polio now, but it's actually much broader. And, and certainly the pandemic disrupted uh, some routine vaccines that uh, kids and maybe adults might have needed along the way as well. So it's just a great time to check in, especially before the school year starts to see, are you up to date with your vaccines? If not, it's easy to get. They're safe, they're effective, and, uh, and they're certainly necessary. And that's the thing, uh, you mentioned back to school, and that's a concern for a lot of parents heading back to school, uh, not just when it comes to polio, but COVID-19 in general, a resurgence of that come this fall, and uh, up, up transmission, uptick in transmission as well. Uh, what would you say to parents who are concerned about some of these, uh, let's say, dormant diseases here in Canada making this resurgence? Should they be concerned? I mean, I think we just always have to be aware of, of you know, these viruses, right? There's going to be viruses. We're, we're going to see a rise in COVID-19 come the fall. That's just going to happen. We know that. We're also going to see influenza or the flu this year. And we're going to see other you know, respiratory viruses that we get in the winter months. There's always steps that you can take to help reduce your risk of getting these. And if you do get them, it helps reduce your risk of having a more severe outcome. For example, flu shots. We know flu shots are going to come out around every fall. Of course, they're not perfect, but it's the best that we've got. And they certainly do help. And it's a great idea to get a flu shot uh, when, when they're available. COVID-19, for example, there will be a booster campaign in the fall, probably from coast to coast in, on, in, in Canada. And, you know, it's a good idea to be up to date on your COVID-19 vaccines. Now, masks, we know masks, for example, are a choice in many parts 
of Canada. In fact, most parts of, of Canada and growing in most parts of the world. And of course, we know masks aren't perfect, but you can still reduce your individual risk of getting uh, COVID or other viral infections if you put on a mask in an indoor setting. So these are just things that we can do to help reduce our risk of infection. And the tools are there. All right. Uh, Dr. Isaac Bogach, thank you so much for joining us again this morning. We appreciate it.